Hi, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and I uh, really am honored and privileged to have you on our 13th episode of Our Brockton. And the title is just exactly what it's about. It's Our City, Our Community, Our Home. And uh, today it's an honor and privilege to have uh, Troy Claxon, who is the Chief Financial Officer for the City of Brockton. Troy, welcome. Mayor, it's a pleasure to join you here today. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is going to be an important uh, episode today. Uh, first of all, Troy uh, is the CFO, as I said, for the City of Brockton, but in his prior uh, professional career, he served on two different occasions as town managers at uh, different municipalities and Plymouth County Administrator. So, Troy, could you give a little background on yourself? Sure, thank you. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here in Brockton, which is actually my hometown. I live on the Cape, but uh, my family, my parents were both raised here, so the opportunity to work here for you, Mayor, and, and the place that I consider my hometown is a real honor. Uh, I started my career nearly 30 years ago in Falmouth where I live as a selectman. That's a part-time elected position where I really learned about public finance and public management and following that I've worked for uh, several communities as you noted uh, over the years, most recently as the town manager in Hanover before I came here to Brockton. So I really have a broad experience uh, in municipal finance and municipal government. So when this opportunity came up a couple of years ago, uh, it was an opportunity not only to use the skills uh, and, and the lessons that I've learned over the years uh, in my continued work, but to come here to Brockton where I have so much history. So it's, uh, I enjoy the work every day. And you do a great job. And we thank, thank you. you. We thank you for your endeavors. And uh, as Troy said, uh, he, he works with me on a daily basis. And again, I just hit the, the one year mark, right? January 6th, I got sworn in as the mayor of Brockton. It's been an honor and privilege. But Really, uh, almost uh, thereafter, we started to deal with COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, we all know how uh, really catastrophic that virus has done to the city of Brockton emotionally, physically, financially. And, uh, you know, we've lost over 350 residents. But one thing that we've been able to, uh, to work on is it's called the CARES Act. And I'm sure uh, you, those watching today have heard about it or read about it. The CARES Act is federal money uh, that has been able to come and really benefit the city of Brockton, but it's been done through the, uh, the care and custody and professionalism of the Plymouth County Commissioners, uh, led by uh, then Chair Dan Pallotta, uh, Greg Hanley, Sandy, uh, Sandy Wright are the three commissioners, at least at that time, and now we have Jared, Jared Veranzola. Uh, Mr. Pallotta has stepped down, and also Tom O'Brien, right, the county treasurer. But uh, Troy, in his capacity as CFO, has really been uh, navigating that ship for the city and the schools. Troy, do you mind sharing some of the information of what the CARES Act has done and really what, 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 what details need to be incorporated before you get that money for the city? Sure. Well, the, uh, the allocation to the county from the federal government was, uh, was around $90 million. And so that's a substantial pool of money to help all 27 communities mm -hmm. in Plymouth County address the needs, uh, the urgent needs that were created by having the coronavirus in our communities. Brockton's allocation as the largest community and only city in the county uh, was just about almost exactly $18 million. And so that really uh, has been a huge help to us over the last year in addressing things uh, like overtime for our first responders, purchasing PPE, personal protective equipment for our first responders uh, and, and other people who are in contact uh, with people that are at risk of the coronavirus. Uh, purchasing equipment uh, so that our departments can more nimbly respond. And that's everything from uh, a vehicle for the Brockton Emergency Management Agency as the primary agency responding to this pandemic, to air filters, as you know, Mayor, that you brought into City Hall so that the employees who work there every day are safe. And so it's been a really a vast undertaking uh, tracking all of the expenses mm -hmm. And the way this works is we spend the money and then submit it to the county for reimbursement. And then they have an infrastructure that they've added, uh, because they're a fairly small entity, of a law firm, uh, an accounting firm, and some financial oversight to make sure that they're properly accounting for all of the expenses and ensuring that they meet the standards of the, the congressional and, and uh, United States Treasury guidance before they give the money back. So it's, it's really been a complex web, but as you know, Mayor, we have a great team mm -hmm. in City Hall. Uh, the auditing department and my team are working very closely together to make sure that we spend the money 
uh, not only properly, but smartly. Yes. And uh, so that we, we feel confident that we'll meet that $18 million cap, uh, but we're also making sure that the money we spend it on are things that will have a lasting impact for the city. Absolutely. And, and one of the things, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that originally the, 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 the deadline was the end of December. Uh, the 30th was set by the county. The 31st would be the last calendar day of the year. Uh, but the federal government and the Treasury has let it extend for a year. So we still have a little more time um, to spend the money. We could, as of today, say, yep, we spent enough, and we have. Uh, but in Troy's guidance, uh, you know, we're being very, very proactive. And one thing that I want to uh, just make clear that we've been proactive on is, is being able to utilize a portion uh, of the money to help rehab sh the Shaw Center. Uh, and the reason for being uh, be able to qualify under the CARES Act is that we are letting our friends at the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center uh, utilize that starting in February next month. But again, thanks to the leadership of Troy and working really in collaboration with the county. And I want to thank the state delegation and, uh, you know, all the efforts of working together. But $18 million is real money for the city of Brockton. It's going to keep our community moving forward and being safe. Uh, and then another piece of information that's been in the public recently, and, uh, and we saw it in the local newspaper, is a $98 million bond authorization. That's a lot of money, $98 million. Uh, but Troy and I have been working since I took office. When I took office on that January 6th, during my speech, I said that the Brockton Police and Brockton Fire need a new public safety facility, a modern, technology, sleek, user-friendly type of uh, facility. And, uh, I want to thank Troy, I want to thank you, uh, because we got it approved recently, the $98 million, uh, bond authorization from the City Council, and thank you for City Council's all 11 members, it was unanimous. Uh, but Troy, could you just explain, because when you say $98 million, it's a heck of a lot of money, but it will not have any tax ramifications on our citizens. And that, Mayor, I think is the most important message uh, that I can provide during our discussion on, on the debt today. Because when you say $98 million, yeah. it, that can be intimidating. Yes. Even for folks like you and me that have decades of experience in local government, to spend that kind of money uh, can be overwhelming. But uh, I, I'll restate what, what you did. You set a mandate that you wanted um, this facility not only functionally to be all the things that you said it was, but to also be affordable for yes. the citizens. Yes. Uh, because... Uh, Brockton is still a community, uh, a blue-collar community, as, as you say, uh, and we have to be responsive uh, to the ability of our citizens to support projects like this. So working under your mandate, my team and I uh, really went to work to try to figure out how best to fit this project into the city's overall capital planning. And I should say, as an aside, as you know, this comes against the backdrop of us working on the city's first ever capital plan, That's right. where you plan to address needs beyond the public safety complex, but to make repairs, additional repairs to the Shaw Center, and buying and building things that the city needs. And so the question comes, well, how do we afford that, right. given the tax burden that's already on our citizens? And I've prepared a graph that I will show you, and it will be up on your screen for our viewers as I discuss it with the mayor. But what we did is we took a look at our capital spending now. And uh, so the city, historically, as all municipalities, borrows money mm -hmm. to buy and to build things. And so we pay, as part of our budget, every year, principal and interest on the money we borrow. Very similar to our, our personal lives, where for those of us that own homes, we budget out of our income money to pay our mortgage. Yep. The city does the same thing. And so we have in our operating budget a certain amount uh, that we pay every year for principal and interest. Right now, that amount is about $12 million a year. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, but as you know, Mayor, our total budget uh, is nearly a half a billion dollars a year, almost $500 million. The rating agencies, you may hear of Moody's and Standard & Poor's discussed from time to time. Generally, they don't like your principal and interest spending to be any more than 10% of your total budget. Yep. So we wouldn't really want our total spending on principal and interest to be more than 40 or $50 million a year. And as, uh, as I said, right now it's about $12 million. So we're well below that threshold. So we set as a goal to keep that spending fairly static. And so if we can keep that spending on principal and interest static in the coming years, 
we can keep the, the budget affordable, but then we need to look at a window of opportunity of how we can buy and build things. So if you take a look at this graph, Mayor, and, and for the viewers at home, it, it will come up on your screen, but this yellow line, the yellow line that you're looking at represents a goal of keeping that spending somewhere around 12 or $13 million a year. So we carried that line throughout the graph. The blue line represents our actual principal and interest payments in the coming years. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it increases over the next few years, but then you have this significant, precipitous drop-off, sort of like standing on the edge of the quarry in Quincy. Yeah. It just goes right down. So what that presents for us and what I call a window of opportunity to then take on some debt. So just for discussion purposes, this green then represents what the principal and interest would be on a $98 million loan. And as you can see, we can pay back that money and stay within our stated goal of what we currently spend on principal and interest. In addition, and this is really important, there's additional room there that we've highlighted in orange where we can buy and build additional things and still keep our spending relatively constant with what it is now. So what that means for our viewers and for our taxpayers, for our decision makers, you and the city council, is that we can be fairly aggressive uh, over the next few years in terms of the investment in the city's infrastructure, but not have an impact on what we ask our citizens to pay to support that. That's not only historic, it's very rare that you have opportunities like this. Mm -hmm. So you asked the city council uh, and they agreed that this is the time to take advantage of that opportunity and, by the way, historically low interest, interest rates, rates so that we can borrow this money, build a brand new public safety facility, but keep it affordable for Brockton residents. And that's what it's all about. And, that, and that's really why I wanted um, Troy Clax and the CFO to come on today because, you know, when you read uh, or hear about almost a hundred million dollar borrowing, it's a heck of a lot of money. But we're doing it in a way where um, we're fiscally prudent cost containment measures. You know, we have a working group of many different uh, aspects of the city from the police and fire to finance, uh, to BEMA, to IT that are working right now for planning. Uh, we have Councilor at Large Fawa, who is the new council president for the year 2021. We have Shirley Azak, the former president from last year, 2020, who is the Ward 7 Councilor, uh, as participants on that as well. And, you know, we have uh, really a good team. So this is gonna come to fruition. Uh, and as Troy just said, I mean, it's historic, and I mean that it's historic for the city of Brockton, taking us to the next level for the next generation. Uh, but it's also providing um, the citizens and the employees really, um, really the tools in the toolbox that we need to move forward as a community and as the city of champions. So, Troy, one, one thing that when we were talking about the CARES Act, one thing, and again, this is a really congratulations to you and Mike Thomas, Superintendent of the Schools, and Aldo Petronio. One thing that uh, again, was historic was we were able to acquire laptops one on one, meaning every boy and girl in the Brockton Public Schools has a laptop. It's that's historic in itself, and it was a seven million dollar price tag that we paid. Uh, the schools paid. Um, did we get paid back on that? We did. We've been fully reimbursed, and so that was indeed an historic step forward. And many, uh, even what some would term as affluent communities in the Commonwealth, just haven't been able to attain that. So the fact that Brockton, uh, under the leadership of yourself and Superintendent Thomas, have been able to put a laptop, and in many cases, by the way, uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot, That's because right. some, some of our students don't have access to, uh, to Wi-Fi, uh, is historic and important. But we did expend the money, and it was paid back by the county, uh, so that initiative was fully supported by the federal government through the, the workings of Plymouth County. So it's really been a wonderful partnership that has been a complete game changer for this city. It really has, and, and, and another game changer. So again, you may recall that I was a councilor at large for 14 years in the city of Brockton, and so I did 14 budgets. Uh, and the budget process is, is always uh, a challenge, but the actual physical budget uh, and years past, uh, it wasn't professional. It was kind of haphazard, a lot of photocopied stuff. So when I became mayor, uh, Troy and I sat down and I said, listen, we need to make it much more professional and streamlined and uniform. Uh, and to his, uh, his credit and his team, his staff that works in the finance department, 
uh, and Chief of Staff Kerry Richards in my office. Uh, we did just that. Uh, and, and could you just, uh, if you don't mind, could you just tell, um, tell the, the, the listeners and the viewers right now, from your past practices working in other municipalities, you kind of were able to come up with different ideas and stuff. And, and at the end of the day, we had a budget book that uh, could potentially be recognized. No question. Another great example of teamwork by uh, your office working with my office and other offices in Town Hall. We had some outside folks with some experience. So there's an organization called the Government Finance Officers Association, and it's an international uh, organization, Canada and the United States, and they award uh, an award called the Distinguished Budget Award. And, uh, and so working, and when I was working in Hanover, our team was able to get that award for the budget that we put together. Uh, but I mean it when I say team, uh, because we assembled some of those members of that team, uh, and with some Brockton folks here, most notably Kerry Richards in your office, who was a tremendous participant in the team, uh, and we put together a document that, of which we're all proud. Uh, it has 400 pages of information, uh, but it's the numbers behind the numbers, right. so that any citizen can look at that budget and not only see what we spend, but why we spend it. Uh, and how we spend it. They say that a budget is the most important policy document of any community. And so this document tells the community what's important to you as the CEO of the community uh, and what those policy priorities are based on what's in the budget. And so it really provides a level of detail that had never been contemplated or provided before. Uh, and it's an important tool, not only for you and for the city council, who will, of course votes on and approves the budget, but for citizens that want to know how their money is being spent. And so the entirety of that document is available on the city's uh, updated website. Absolutely is. And uh, I know time is, uh, time is coming down, but before we conclude, I just want to let you know that uh, when you talk about uh, the finance uh, officer, the CFO, uh, Troy, um, people say, well, well what, do, what do you do? Just, you know, you just get together for the budget. No, we meet on a daily basis. Troy meets with all the department heads, police and fire. It runs the gamut, right? Big, big departments, small departments. Uh, finance is what runs our municipality, right? And on, on the school side, all the Petronio is, is, is helping uh, on the school side with Mike Thomas. So um, when, uh, when we're planning the budget in COVID uh, times, uh, the four of us got together on a regular basis to really crunch the numbers and we'll be doing that again. We've already started initial, believe it or not, initial conversations for the upcoming budget. But, but Troy, since we're wrapping up, I don't know if you have any other comments or questions or some, uh, some observations, but one thing I'm going to ask you, uh, when you're driving up from the Cape and you're coming to the City of Champions, I know you love Brockton, right? You love it. Uh, what, what excites you about the day when you come to the city? So my... Uh as I said, both of my parents grew up here, so both sets of grandparents lived here. And when I was a kid, uh, my mother's parents still lived here in Brockton before they, uh, before they moved to the Cape uh, near the end of their life. So when I was young, I spent a lot of time here, and I would come up, you know, people from this part of the state go down to the Cape for the summer. I would come from the Cape to Brockton. <laughs> you go the other way. <laughs> uh, but so when I'm driving around, particularly... Uh, when I'm, sometimes I'll go home, rather than heading down uh, 123 to the highway to Route 24, I'll drive down Main Street mm -hmm. and go through West Bridgewater and Bridgewater um, because those are the same routes that my grandfather and I took. Mm -hmm. uh, so I used to go on rides with him. We'd go over to the old uh, dip and sip donuts, oh, if you yeah. remember yeah, that, I of do. course you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so when I drive in, even every morning when I get out of my car and walk to the city hall, I used to come to city hall with my grandfather mm. back when there was a restroom out front. Uh, th that's going back a lot of years. And so the fact that there are so many memories for me here and I have such a connection uh, is what really makes it special to, to work here. And so it's, it's my honor to work, Mayor, with you every day and to work on behalf of you, the citizens, of the city of Brockton. Uh, but I, I guess for me in closing, uh, this important work that we're doing on the debt and building things is not the end of our work. Uh, we, we, we work, as you mentioned, every day. And so uh, we're also working on looking at the city's pension obligations yes. and reworking that and doing some innovative things with that so that we can save even more money. So I'd be glad to come back at a future date 
and really continue to update both you and the citizens about the important work we're doing. And I, and I would welcome that. I mean, it really, it's extremely important. Um, and again, it's been my honor and privilege to have Troy Claxon, the CFO for the City of Brockton, who, uh, as you can see, is, is a man passionate about his position, passionate for the City of Brockton, and really, really a wonderful, uh, really wonderful professional that we have here at City Hall. So again, it's my honor and privilege to serve as the 50th mayor of the City of Brockton. Uh, our community, our home, our Brockton. This was the 13th episode of The Cable Show, and I'll be back again next week for the 14th episode. Be safe, be well, and thank you very much. Thanks, Troy. Thank you, Mayor.